John Boyne, our guest, he's an international best-selling writer. Uh, one of his books has been made into a movie. Perhaps his new book will be made into a movie. I think so. Somebody should option this. It's because, you know, uh, it's the, it's kind of trendy right now. Not that war is trendy, but War Horse, uh, War Horse on Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose even the era with go. Downton Abbey and all that. <laughs> Downton Abbey. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a fascinating period, I think, you know, mm -hmm. that, that because the interesting thing about the First World War is that that's the moment in history where everything in Europe changes. You know, you have hundreds of years of Tsarist rule in Russia comes to an end. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of years of the Kaisers in Germany comes to an end. Britain is the only country which retains its old monarchy after the war. In a very short space of time, all the borders are changed, the countries are changed, and of course, it, it's the it's the, the starting place in many ways for what becomes the Second World War mm -hmm. 21 years later. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me you're a bit of a history buff. True, not true? It, it is true. I, I mean, the, the novels I've written all seem to be set in different periods of history. Mm -hmm. But the curious thing to me now, after seven novels for adults and three for children, is that when I started out, I never would have imagined I would write all these books for, uh, about the past. It simply wasn't mm -hmm. something I had intended. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I did it with the first one, and I just really enjoy write, doing the research. I'm, I'm fascinated by different periods of history. There's so much to write about. And every time I try to pull away from it, I, I get pulled back in. <laughs> and where do you start? Do you start in front of your laptop, just letting words flow? Do you go to the library, do research? Do you, re you said you read other books. I, I, I read some novels, I read some nonfiction, um, and I know the moment where it's time to put all those books away mm -hmm. and just sit down, chapter one, you know, morning time somewhere, and, <laughs> and, and just, just start it. Mm -hmm. I, again, uh, as I mentioned at the start, it's very instinctive, these things. You know the moment where you have enough to just write a draft, at least, and uh, that if you, if, you, if you keep researching, you're going to lose the story somewhere. You're better off just getting on right. with the thing. Right, so the characters are in your head constantly. Yeah. And the names of the characters, naming a character. Yes. Uh, how do you do that? Very important. Um, for the narrator of this book, Tristan Sadler, um, there was something, I mean, he's a very unhappy character. The voice is very elegiac. Um, I wanted something sad, Sadler. Mm -hmm. I wanted a, an English name that isn't very common anymore, so I, I chose Tristan. Mm -hmm. the, the, the name he's also of, a writer. Yes, he's also a writer. Yes. But the sister of Will in the book, who, who spends a lot of time with Tristan during the day, um, Marion, and whose, whose, whose voice was a very, is a very important one in the book. I chose her name because one of my favorite novels is The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley. Oh. I don't know if you're familiar with that yes, book. Yes, I've heard of that. And it's somebody a, said, I have to read it. It's, it's one it's, of those you have to read. I think it's one of the, the greatest novels ever written. Mm. But there's a character in that called Marion Maudsley. And she's a very bright, intelligent young woman at a time where women were not expected to be bright and intelligent. Mm. And we were, but... Not but expected yes, we're to not, be. not given the voice. <laughs> exactly. And I love that book, and that was one of the books where the language of that book was going to influence the language of my novel. Mm -hmm. So I chose Marion really as a mm -hmm. homage to, or a ripoff. Right, a ripoff. <laughs> of, of but Marianne kind of a kismet, to. really, for you. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, you know, you can't just, there's nothing in a novel which is throwaway in that sense. Whether it's choosing the characters' names, the time, the place, where they're going to be mm -hmm. sitting, what they're going to be talking about, everything mm -hmm. matters in some way. It's not just a question of just throwing something down there. And underneath some of the absolutists is a deep, dark, soul-destroying secret, one that has to be told and let out. And I won't let it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is the thing which has influenced Tristan's life for 60 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the fact that he has this relationship with this boy in the trenches. It's where that relationship leads them and a single moment on a single morning where he behaves, he, he commits one single act, which that's mm -hmm. it. There's no recovery from that. And it's that level of remorse and shame and regret which he is trying to unburden himself of with Marion. He's trying his to sister. tell her what it is he did because mm -hmm. he thinks if he can't get this off his chest, he's never going to be happy. He's never going to be happy anyway. Have you always wanted to write about a gay character? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something I haven't done in eight previous novels, um, and it was one of the subjects that was always in my head, it would be something I'd like to explore in fiction, mm -hmm. um, but was waiting for the right story in which to tell it. And as I was thinking about this novel, and thinking about the trenches, and you know, a, a, a mostly, well, an entirely masculine community of soldiers, I thought, well, maybe this is the opportunity to get into this subject and to explore it in some depth. And as you know, still in, in the modern military, 
it's yeah. not easy to be gay. It's not, but and at the time in which this book is written, of course, it's not just that it's not easy, it's also that it's illegal. Yes. And that, you know, you'd be thrown into jail for less. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, it's the same, I mean, it's, it's as difficult now. I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw this on the Ask Republican. Ask, don't tell. Well, yes, but also the, the, the Republican primaries in the States mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago when um, a, a gay soldier at the, uh, in Iraq was asking a question and was booed by the audience mm -hmm. for saying that he happened to be gay, even though he was a soldier. And not one of the candidates defended him. And you think this is what it is, 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Soldier at the front whose life could be finished by the end yes. of the day. And nobody has the guts to actually take him on his own merits. Mm -hmm. it's, it's shocking. Exactly. Still work to do. First book you loved, do you remember? When you, when oh. you were a young lad. Um, Always the, in the Dublin? The, Nar the Narnia books um, yes. meant a lot to me. But actually the first first group of books that I really got engaged with were, the, were Dickens' books of orphans. Oliver Twist, mm -hmm. Dick, David Copperfield, Nicholas mm -hmm. Nickleby. I loved reading about young characters like myself who were left on their own in the world, who had to find some kind of heroic element within themselves. Absolutely love those books. Yes, I, I loved uh, The Black Stallion Returns, Walter Farley, and okay. Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. Of course. The Silver Sword by Ian Surrailer, which was my mm -hmm. first introduction to reading about mm -hmm. the Second World War and which influenced Boy in the Strap Pajamas in, 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 a, in a major way. And what do you make of Hunger Games? Have you read any of it? I've read the first one. I haven't mm -hmm. read the second two. Um, I quite liked it. I think it's good that there's a, a very strong female character because the thing I didn't like about Twilight, which my niece made me um, read, right. was that the, the female character is so mm. lame, you know, and mm -hmm. just revolves around the boys. Mm -hmm. But I, I quite like the fact that there's a good, strong female character. Yes, and the next uh, uh, young book for you, yes. one coming out? Yes, uh, the terrible thing that happened to Barnaby Brockett, uh, which will be out in Canada next January, and it's about a family in brief who don't like anybody to be different, don't like their children to be different, and then they have a child who floats, doesn't obey the law of gravity, so they have to carry him around in a lead, and they're very embarrassed. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and part of it takes place in Canada. So, how great, yeah. because they used to have us on leashes before you were born, <laughs> I'm sure. Our parents put little harnesses on us oh, and yeah. walked us down the street, and if you were like, uh, a, a busy child, they hook you to the clothesline well, in the actually, backyard, I see that and you're going like Dublin back still. and forth in the people, clothesline in your little walking. harness, like the dog. I see parents walking with a with a with a lead with children now because you know they're afraid the child will get lost, <laughs> exactly, or, or run over, yeah. or something like that. Perfectly acceptable. Yeah. How nice to meet you. And you. And you've read John Irving's new one. I've read it. It's brilliant. It's Great to be a best. friend, isn't it? Yeah. What's it called? It's called In, in One Person. Coming yes. up. Thank you. Vancouver International Writers Fest brings John Boyne here tonight, 7.30 p.m., Vancouver Public Library with The Absolutist.